Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. This is my controller setup guide for flying helicopters in Microsoft Flight Sim. A number of people requested I do this video so here you are. So I'm going to show you my setup guide with the Velocity One flight stick as it's the new kid on the block per se. I feel it's fitting to set up with the Velocity 1 flight stick. But if you follow this guide, you should be able to set up using any flight stick or controller, in fact, or any Holtas system, like the Holtas 1, Holtas 4, or other advanced Holtas systems, or flight sticks. I'm also going to be showing you this on PC. It's easier for me to record these types of videos on PC, but it should work on the Xbox as well. Listen, let's not dilly-dally any longer. Let's get into the video. So before I show you my controls, I first want to discuss uh, the bug that came in with Sim Update 11, the 40th anniversary edition of Microsoft Flight Sim. And it was unflyable for me helicopters, and it may be the same for you. Now, I've actually got my default bindings for the Velocity 1 flight stick active. So these are just default. You can actually fly helicopters with these. Let's just get in the cockpit, though. I'm just going to use my throttle here. I'll show you a physical demonstration of my controls and how I control them later in this video. A sort of flight test when I've set up all the controls. But with the default, yeah, you can fly it. Increasing the throttle will hover you. Moving your stick around will move it in generally the correct directions. Let me just hover a bit more. Now, when I first jumped into the helicopters, in Microsoft Flight Sim. My helicopter, I'm going to try and force this. It was rocking side to side, twisting around, wasn't even touching the controls. It was doing something similar to what you're seeing on screen and forcibly doing that just for effect. But it was rocking from side to side, spinning. I thought, watching other videos, I was noticing that I was getting erratic behavior. And what fixed it for me? Let me just steady my chopper here. I went to options, general options, and this is from researching and reading comments on other videos, so it's not my solution, it's just a solution that I came across and it worked for me. Under general options, in options, general options, go to flight model, and you want to change, if you got it on modern, change it to legacy, and under legacy, put it to realistic, you've got an extra menu here. I think it's typically somewhere like that. But put it to realistic, apply and save. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to jinx myself again. Apply and save that. You may have to restart the flight. And then put it back to modern. And like I said, I'm not going to uh, apply that. But put it back to modern, apply and save. If your helicopter's still not behaving, restart the flight. You don't need to restart the sim. I didn't. But then, after doing that, my choppers, or helicopters, started to behave. And I could go and fly them. Like I said, you can actually fly this with the default bindings for the Velocity 1. It's just not properly set up. And there's other bindings that I want to make to make my life easier as well. Something else I do recommend on this part, in assistance options, when you're learning to fly, if you're like me, I'm no expert in helicopters, by the way. So when I do go for a fly later, just keep that in mind. I'm quite a novice when it comes to helicopters. In assistant options, so options, assistant options, put your failure and damage, crash damage, disabled. This means if you were to land sharply or heavily, uh, your flight won't end. If you crash, your flight won't end. And it just lets you get used to helicopters. There's another thing here, and the jury's out on this for, for many people. 
But under piloting, so let's just close those options again. So assistant options, piloting. At the bottom here, you've got helicopters, assisted tail rotor and assisted cyclic. Have these on. I think they're on by default. People say turn them off. If you do turn them off, you're going to find your helicopter, particularly if you're not used to helicopters, more difficult. It becomes more realistic and it becomes uh, very difficult to control in my experience. Get used to helicopters first, then turn these off, these two options, one by one. In this video, I'm going to keep them on because it does help when you're learning to fly helicopters. Let me just steady myself with my stick there. There we go. And I can bring her down gently. Let's get more towards... Oh, it doesn't matter. Gently-ish. <laughs> As you can see, I'm still getting used to them. Okay, let's get on with more settings. So this part of the video will be setting up controls. I'm just going to go to options and control options. Now I'm going to duplicate the default profile here because I'm going to duplicate it and delete some bindings. Some people say set up a new profile and just set up your controls one by one. I find it easier to duplicate because it keeps your camera controls. So you know your hat too basically, you can look around the cockpit. There's some of those con uh, settings that I'll have to delete but that's okay. I just find it easier to duplicate this. So let's do that. Preset manager, duplicate. And um, we're going to call that, oh, we'll call that uh, helicopters, shall we? Seems proper. Helicopters. Helicopters, okay. And we can apply and save that. Now we've set that up. I want to delete a few things here because there's things that we won't need in helicopters. The first things I want to delete are you flight control services, any sort, any of the axis, so the rudder axis, elevator, ailerons, we're going to be replacing them. So under flight control services, primary flight control services, just click in where you've got like rudder here, what you've got assigned to it, so click in the box and you can clear the current input. I'm sure a lot of you know how to do this and validate. Uh, close the cockpit camera, close the camera menu hopefully. We'll Clear the elevator axis, clear current input, validate, and the cockpit camera is going to open again, never mind. Clear the aileron axis, clear current input, and validate. So, under primary flight control, I've got my primary flight controls axis all deleted now, that's brilliant. Apply and save. Just bear with me for a moment. I'm just going to go to option. I'm going to make my life easier so that cockpit camera... If you open a menu, it seems to open every time you delete something or alter something. So flight control services, control trimming services. I'm going to delete all these trim settings as well. So clear current input, validate. Clear current input, click in it rather. Clear current input, validate. And we'll clear the trim wheel setting as well, clear current input and validate. And apply and save and secondary control services. We don't need flaps in the helicopters. So we can clear all these, clear current input, validate, clear current input and validate, and clear current inputs. Remember these are the default settings that we've just duplicated. And apply and save. There's other things that we need to delete here. That's the throttle under power management. Now remember, these are not ones I've set up. These are there by default. So we're just going to clear these, anything under power management. Click in the box, clear current input, validate. Clear current input and validate. So we've got pretty much no flight controls at the moment, or primary flight controls, or throttle. And apply and save. Autopilot, we don't... Actually, I'll keep autopilot there. Landing gear, we don't need that. We can clear the current input and validate. I won't be using autopilot in this video, but I'll just keep that there. In fact, it's going to, oh, it doesn't matter if it keeps opening. Brakes, we don't need brakes in the helicopter. We'll clear those. So I'm just clearing things that I know I won't need. But in particular, your flight controls, your primary flight controls, anything under flight control services, and your throttle settings as well. 
Everything else there, I'm just going to leave. There's like radio settings, which actually I don't need that. <laughs> Let's just get rid of that. But everything else, it doesn't really matter. Lights is on button 8, but that's okay. I can leave the lights there. And autopilot, I can leave that alone. Okay, and apply and save. So now we have everything deleted. We can start setting up some settings. So now continuing, we have a nice, clean, tidy profile here with no flight controls. You want to go to your filter and make sure this is on all. And of course, this, like always, will show all the possible controls. Let's just open and collapse them. All the possible controls that you can set up under flight control services, primary flight control services. And the first thing we'll set up is your tail rotor axis. This generally yaws your aircraft around, so it just swings your helicopter around, rather, so that you're facing a different direction. This is generally put on the rudders, so you'll have a couple of rudder pedals in choppers as well, and you would control your tail rotor axis with them. So we're going to do the same, but on the twist, I've not got my rudders connected, and I'm going to do this all on the Velocity 1 flight stick, so you can follow along if that's all you own. So I'm going to click in the box, click in Start Scanning, and I'm going to twist my flight stick. And it's axis Z, or Z. Validate. And we can apply and save that. I'm going to leave the reverse axis ticked because that seems to behave properly. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to set our cyclic longitude axis. Set cyclic, cyclic, it's a mouthful, longitudinal, longitudinal axis. Let's not say that again. And basically that's your pushing your flight stick forward and backwards so it's controlling you know if you, once you hover up in the, in the air if you push your stick forward you'll start moving forward if you pull it back you'll slow down essentially so i'm going to click in the box click in start scanning i'm just going to push my flight stick forward and axis y and validate and the other thing we want to set up in this menu is set your cyclic lateral axis so it's moving from side to side the joystick in this case so again we'll click in the box click in start scanning move my joystick to the right axis x so it's all looking nice and tidy there and apply and save so those are those axes set up we're going to set up while we're here control trimming axis let's just go back there so those menus don't keep opening. I'm going to put the filter to, let it load in. Filter to all. As we don't have any trim axis set up currently. Control trimming services, control trimming services. And we're looking for increase and decrease rotor uh, longer, longitudinal axis. Uh, trim, rather trim. So increase rotor longitudinal trim. Now I'm going to use, you would think I use my uh, trim wheel here. I'm not. I find it easier in helicopters to use buttons. So I'm going to use on the left there button A and B. I'm going to use B to increase. So it's this button here where my mouse is. And A to decrease. This will make sense when I show you in flight later. So increase, make sure I've got the right one there. I'm gonna click in the box, increase rotor longitudinal trim. Click in the box, click in start scanning, and I'm gonna press my B key. Don't worry if it's set to other things, these won't interact or interfere once you're in the cockpit. Click on validate. That's from the default settings at least. If you've set this up any other way, you may have to delete buttons that you've set up. And apply and save. We're looking for this now, but decrease. There you go. Decrease rotor trim there. Click in the box. Click and start scanning. I'm going to press my button A for this. 
And again, don't worry about these. These won't affect it once you, these won't take effect if you're in the cockpit. And validate. And apply and save. I am gonna set up another trim. That's uh, increase and decrease rotor lateral trim. Now if I can find that, yeah, it's just below basically the longitudinal trim there. You've got uh, lateral trim as well. Now for this, I'm actually going to use my hat one left and right. So for increase rotor lateral trim, let's click in the box, click and start scanning. I'm going to move my hat one right. Now, if you're using like me, you've copied the default profile. I've done this for a reason because you may not have another profile set up. You've got cockpit quick view right. We're going to have to get rid of that binding, but we could do that in a moment. Validate. I'm going to apply and save that. And we're just looking for decrease uh, rotor la lateral trim there as well. So click in the box, click and start scanning and move your hat one left. And again, we're going to have to delete cockpit quick view left and validate and apply and save. Let's go in search by input. I'll move my hat one left and it will show me all the bindings I've got set up on it. I don't want to have that cockpit quick view left if I'm trimming, if I have to trim. So if your helicopter suddenly goes vertical or on its side, basically, you need to trim to get it back upright. I don't want my cockpit quick view kicking in as well. So just click in the box like we did before, clear current input and validate and apply and save. I'm just going to click in that box again, move my hat one right. And do the same with cockpit quick view right. Click in the box, clear current input, validate, and apply and save. So there you go, we got, oh, just bear with me for a moment. I'm trying to click out of that, uh, and it's done it again. Let's try again. There we go. Third time lucky, hey? So we put it all back to assigned, close that. We've got some flight control services set up now, primary flight control services and control trimming services, but there's more. Let's go on. Okay, so onwards and upwards, we need to set up now our collective and essentially think of it like the throttle for the helicopter. It behaves a little bit differently to a throttle. It helps your helicopter rise and descend. But to find this, we go to filter Change it to all again so we get all the possible controls. Under power management, click in there. Don't click in anything else. Just under the power management uh, menu there, the top menu, you've got collective axis. What you want to do there is click in the box, click and start scanning and move your throttle, what you want to assign as your throttle, up or down, axis Z there, and validate. And essentially, with this, now, if you don't click off reverse axis, while your throttle is all the way up, I'm using this throttle lever, by the way, the, the left one. If it's all the way up, that means that your collective is down or up in the helicopter, but it means that you're on the ground. Uh, if you, if, so if you don't have this on ticked, at the top there, it means you've got no collective engaged. As you pull it towards you, that's when your collective will engage and your helicopter will rise. That's the proper way in helicopters. But for pure muscle memory, to make sure that I don't get confused when I'm flying something else, I'm going to click off tick. I'm going to tick off reverse axis. So I'm not going to have that ticked. So basically when my throttle's down, I've got no collective engaged. And when I move my throttle up, it means I'm going to hover into the air. Just makes it easier for me. So apply and save, but you can have that either way you want it. Whilst we're here now, that is pretty much all the controls that I need to set up for helicopters. It's all you need to, to get up and running with helicopters. So let's put this all to a sign now. So the controls we set up are primary flight controls, your trimming services, and your power management, your collective. That's all you pretty much need to get up and running. 
The only other thing I want to show you here are sensitivities. Remember I copied the default sensitivity or the, the default profile. So if we go into sensitivities, you will find I've got no sensitivity set and that's pretty much perfect, at least for the pitch, the longitudinal axis and the lateral axis, so axis X and Y there, that's perfect. With the rudders, essentially what's that called now tail rotor axis i do feel it needs a bit of sensitivity turning down on it otherwise it's too sensitive so what i'm going to do i'm going to put that to minus nine in both the minus and plus sensitivities but the rest of them i'm going to leave all as default all as zero because you want your flight stick to be sensitive like it would be in a helicopter so I'm going to press done there, apply and save there, and go back and resume. <clears throat> Getting the cockpit, I'm going to give these a try. So I'm going to show you in a moment physically me moving my uh, controls on my Velocity 1 flight stick. But for now, I just want to test all these. So I'm increasing the throttle. That's working fine. Let's increase it a little bit more. The collective, rather, not the throttle. Now, uh, you just have to steady your helicopter when you start rising, because you're getting a lot of wind vortexes. Now, I've got somebody else spawned in next to me there. Whoever you are, welcome to the video. If I push my stick forward, it's going to move forward. If I push it back, it's going to move back. If I twist my stick... You should find my helicopter will yaw and turn me around. And there we go, we'll turn all the way around. And let's try. Okay, let's give this chap room next to me. I'm going to land over here. I'm going to try a gentle landing. I'm just testing out my controls. And push forward a little bit and bring it down gently this time, hopefully. There is one other thing I want to set up, actually, whilst we're here. Let's just bring her down. Now, behave yourself. Like I said, you really have to get used to the way the wind carries you, and goodness knows what. Oh, I'm right on the edge. <laughs> Not brilliant. So, do do this. What I'm doing here, practice on the little sort of helipads, or wherever you are, even on a runway, if you prefer. Practice. Move your axis forward, backwards twist if you want to turn get used to it and try and land in certain places try and get it spot on if you can i'm not doing a best job there we go that will do let's just get outside oh just off the edge there but it gives him a little bit more room something else i want to set up there i'm too far away from these controls here from my displays so what i'm going to do i'm just going to mouse forward and I'll do this with you so we can do this step by step. On my keyboard, I'm going to press Control, Alt, and 5 and save that as Quick View 5. Let me go back to my default view. If I press Alt and 5, yep, it's put me back there. I just want it a little bit closer. So Control, Alt, and 5. Let's try that again. Get back to the default view. Alt and 5. Okay. Maybe a little bit closer. If I do it there, that should be for perfect. Control, Alt, and 5. Alt, and 5. There we go. So I get a better view of these controls. Actually, it's a bit too close now. Trial and error, chaps. Control, Alt, and 5. Whatever this lands at, we'll just keep it just for the sake of our, all our sanities. You know what? I've got a clearer view. I can see what's going on. That will do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to options, control options. I'm going to put the filter to all once it's loaded in. Filter to all. Under camera. So click in your camera menu, cockpit camera. I want to load custom cameras 5, which I just set up. I'm going to assign it to my B7 on my Velocity 1 fly stick. It's about here. Click in the box, click and start scanning, B7, display navlog, nav -log. remember these are the default settings, so I'm going to validate that, apply and save, collapse all there, 
open collapse, go back to assigned. I'm just going to click in search by input, press my B7 again, because I don't want my nav log to show when I press that button. Click in the box there next to display nav log. Clear current input, validate, go through this a little bit quick with you, and apply and save and go back. So I've just got load custom camera in there. So if I'm moving around, and I'm in my default view, moving around, looking around, I want to get closer to my instruments. There you go, that works. Okay, so with all those settings set up, let me give you a physical demonstration. I've set the camera up so you get a view of my Velocity 1 flight stick, and let's go for a quick fly around. Okay, so in the Bell 407 familiar location, it should be London City Airport. Let me just hit record on the camera. So there you go, familiar sight. You can see my Velocity 1 flight stick and you can see me controlling this, hopefully properly. Click my B7 here. That's the view I set up before, the custom camera view. That's fantastic. I can still look around with my hat switch brilliantly. Okay, so what I'm going to... Oh, I have my throttle up. So that's down. There's no collective engage. I'm going to... I hope you can see that. I can do it with this hand so you can see. I'm going to increase that throttle slowly. Get it to about 40-odd percent on the readout there. And essentially, what I want to have... I want to lift off the ground. A little bit more there. As that's happening, I'm just going to control... A little bit more. Control the helicopter with my stick just to steady her and keep increasing that collective. So I keep calling and get throttled. It's just <laughs> just so used to that being the throttle. Increasing the collective. So I'm rising, I don't know, several meters off the ground. Going to twist and turn my flight stick there just so I'm facing in the direction of London City. If I push forward on my stick, I'm going to increase my forward momentum there. Now, if I don't want to hold that stick continually forward, especially with this Velocity 1 flight stick, as you know, it's good, has good tension on it, I'm going to press A, and I believe that's decrease longitudinal trim there. Press it a few times, it means I can just relieve pressure on holding that stick forward. Press it too many times there. That's going a bit too quick for my liking because I do want to show you something when we get down here. If I go external. Oh, there you go. Bottom right, you can see where my trim is. Now it's I've got a, I've got a lot of uh, decrease set there. So if I press B, see the bottom right there trim. I've got it set back to neutral now. Let's get back inside the cockpit just because my helicopter's complaining a little bit there. I'm just going to push forward. I'm just going to use a little bit of decrease longitudinal trim. And also decrease my altitude there as well. Because I just want to quickly show you. And this is me practicing. I'm not an expert with choppers, chaps. I've barely flown them, so do bear with me. But with these controls set up, it does make it a lot easier. And a couple of those assists are on, which I showed you before. Let's just pop outside and just get that trim back to neutral now, which is there. And I'll keep turning. So I'm pretty much in hover mode at the moment. My trim's neutral. And if I relieve pressure on the stick, I should be pretty much just hovering in the air. I'm not climbing much either there, which is good. I do you want to descend a bit? Because I want to show you that... Oh, actually, no, I don't want to change my view because it's going to give me some forward momentum. So I don't want to move my stick forward. I don't want to move forward anymore. I'll just descend in altitude and see if I can do this. So, yeah, just practice. And this is me practicing as well. I need a lot more practice in these choppers. There we go. Increase my throttle. Hope you can see that my hand's not too much in the way. Oh, increase it more. I'm going to land on the river here otherwise increase 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 oh am i just gonna get away with that i am <laughs> that bridge in the way right there where that tower is that's where i was stood when i filmed my live views of london city airport link to that in the top right there are trucks and buses passing right by me 
And it was a pretty hair-raising moment. I gave you pretty much that view in that video. So there you go. Of course, I'll show, show you that. You can do that easily in a chopper. Show you those kind of views. So let's get back to business. I'm going to increase, decrease my longitudinal trim there. Just so I can relieve pressure on holding this stick forward. There you go. So we're in a forward momentum there. Relieve pressure on the stick. And it's all about practicing those kind of maneuvers. Using a bit of trim. Hovering and landing at parks around London. Hovering around buildings. Not a massive fan of helicopters in Sims generally. But I'm going to make an exception in Flight Simulator when you can see this wonderful scenery up close and personal. Uh, when it loads in properly. It's not doing too bad a job in most places. When you can get towards the landmarks and see them up close and personal. Really taking the detail. That's where the fun comes with these choppers. So yeah, it's a good novelty. It's something different. And I've got to say, I'm quite enjoying them. Not as much as flying aeroplanes. That's my... Well, it's always going to be my passion. But, yeah, it's a good change. Well, listen, chaps, let me get outside. And set my trim so it's more in a neutral position. So I hover. The chopper's going to complain a bit when I do that. and start rising. So let's just throttle back a little bit to stop that. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Let me just stop the camera recording. That's stopped. Let me know your thoughts. Give these settings a try if you're on PC or Xbox. Give them a try. There you go. I'm in a nice hover. Let me know your thoughts. Give it a like if, you, if you've enjoyed the video and it's been helpful to you. Subscribe for more. More flight simulator videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.